Hello everyone. Welcome to this course, Introduction to Blockchain Development with Hyperledger Fabric by Coding Bootcamps. In this section, we are going to learn what blockchain technology is. A little bit about myself, who is your instructor. My name is Sushma and I have 6 plus years of experience in industry. I hold a master degree in computer science and information security. I also have a master degree certification on blockchain. I have played a role of a Java developer, web developer, full stack engineer and also a tech lead in my career lane. Prerequisites for taking this course. You should have basic knowledge of Linux command and basic knowledge of Node.js to write the smart contracts and you should be willing to learn blockchain technology. In this session, we are going to see what blockchain is, what are, what are the types of network, what are blockchain components, what are the use cases of blockchain and what are the examples. So before jumping into what blockchain is, let us understand what is the difference between centralized model or centralized system and decentralized model or decentralized system. So in case of centralized system, which you can see on the left side, you can see there is one central authority or one central organization who is holding the data. So one organization is responsible for maintaining the data in the system. So if you want to be part of that system, you should trust that central authority with the data that you are providing to that to that organization. But in case of decentralized model, as you can see, there is no centralized authority, a centralized authority of data. So each POS or each participant in the network can talk to each other and exchange data between them. So in the decentralized model, you don't invest your trust only on one single authority or one single organization. Instead of that, you build your trust on the network. So this is where blockchain comes in. With blockchain, we move away from trusting only one central authority. Instead, we trust the system. So now let us see when and how blockchain came into picture. So blockchain became popular because of Bitcoin. So Bitcoin was originally devised for digital currency exchange. The underlying technology that Bitcoin uses is blockchain. After the popularity of Bitcoin, many innovative ideas have come forth which can take advantage of the blockchain technology. So blockchain technology is a system that uses many existing technologies like peer-to-peer -peer network, digital signature, hashing algorithm, etc. And it forms a blockchain system. So who coined this term? A person or organization, we, are, we, we don't know whether Satoshi Nakamoto is a person or an organization. So it is a pseudonym. So he or that person is responsible for coining this system. Now let us understand the definition of blockchain given by hyperledger.org. A blockchain is a peer-to-peer -peer distributed ledger forced by consensus combined with the system for smart contracts and other assistive technologies. What do you mean by that? Now let us see what do you mean by peer-to-peer -peer distributed ledger. It means it doesn't have to deal with a single server so it is peer-to-peer. -peer. So there is no single authority, single central authority. So all transaction data of the system will be available with each peer as we have seen in the centralized, decentralized model in the previous picture. So forged by consensus. What do you mean by consensus? 
what transactional data that has to be stored in the distributed ledger is decided by a process and that process is called consensus. And what do you mean by smart contract? So smart contracts are the programs that we place it on the network and when certain conditions are met, smart contracts will execute on its own. What do you mean by other assistive technology? As I mentioned before, blockchain is a system that uses many existing technologies like peer-to-peer -peer network, digital signature, hashing algorithm, and etc. So these are the other assistive technology that it uses. But why the name blockchain? So block refers to a set of transactions that are bundled together and added to the chain of every peer at the same time. Next block will be appended to the existing block and the process continues and it forms a chain. That is why the name blockchain. Moving on to types of network. Blockchain network is majorly categorized into the following sections, which is public blockchain network, private blockchain network, permission or consortium blockchain network. Each of these types have their own implementation. Couple of examples for them are given in this section. Now let us understand what are the difference, where it is used, what are the benefits and challenges of all these three types of network. First one is public network, private, second one is private network and the third one is permissioned or consortium network. What is the network type? So in public network is completely decentralized and private network is partially decentralized. Consortium network is partially decentralized. It can be a combination of both public and private networks. So who can take part in public network? So anyone like you and me can participate in the network and data is validated by every participant or every peer, thus making it secure. So not everyone can be part of private or consortium network. So permission to read and write on the blockchain is contro controlled by the owner of the blockchain. And in case of consortium network, permission to read and write on the blockchain is controlled by predetermined nodes. What are the benefits of public, block, public network? So public network is secure as the entire network verifies the transaction, meaning entire POs verify the transaction. It is transparent as all the transactions are made public with individual anonymity. In case of private network, it is efficient as verification is, but is done just by the owner of the blockchain. So only the owner can, uh, can have an access to read and write. In case of consortium, the benefits are, these are also efficient because only a known number of nodes who forms the consortium can verify the transaction. So the read and write authority is distributed among predetermined nodes. So what are the challenges of public network? Here the efficiency is low because all the network, entire network verifies the transaction. So the efficiency is low. In case of private network, the controlling power is consolidated to a single authority who is the owner of the network. In case of consortium network, the controlling power is consolidated to a single organization who, who has formed the consortium and who is acting uh, as a leader of the consortium. If you don't understand more about consortium, 
when we get to the next session sections so you will understand what do you mean by forming a consortium and other topics around it so don't worry now you might ask a question do i need blockchain for every use case the answer is no so there are certain use cases which needs blockchain there are certain use cases which doesn't need blockchain so in this slide you can see which are the use cases which fits into blockchain which are the use cases which doesn't need blockchain for your application do you need a database if the answer is no then you don't need a blockchain if the answer is yes then you have to ask again a question are there multiple writers to the database or the ledger if the answer is no then you don't need blockchain if the answer is yes ask yourself again another question or all writers trusted if the answer is yes you don't need blockchain if the answer is no the writers are not trusted then you have to ask yourself another question do they have someone in common they trust which is a third party if the answer is no then you definitely need a blockchain if the answer is yes then you don't go for blockchain so this is the simple way of explaining or deciding whether your application or your use case fits into blockchain or not so what are the components of blockchain so there are main four components of blockchain first is consensus so consensus refers to a system of ensuring that parties agree to a certain state of the system as the true state provenance provenance system tracks changes that are made to data where data originates and moves to and who makes changes to it over time immutability an immutable immutable object is an object whose state cannot be modified after it is created finality finality is the affirmation that all well formed blocks will not be revoked once committed to blockchain so these are the main four components of blockchain coming into use cases of blockchain there are many use cases of blockchain and many industries are working towards towards in uh, bringing uh, bringing blockchain and adapting adapting blockchain for their use cases listed or couple of them first is decentralized cryptocurrency asset management like trading trade processing and settlement payment like cross border payment iot smart appliances smart chain sensor blockchain healthcare blockchain music blockchain government personal identification and many more please go through this link so this link has 50 plus real world blockchain use cases and you will also find the companies who have already included their uh, application and they are already in a building fa building phase of this blockchain use cases that is it for this lecture in the next session we'll learn what blockchain structure is the blockchain life cycle and how to write smart contract different consensus algorithms that are supported players in blockchain and many more topics to know more and to get more understanding of blockchain please please look into these links and please do subscribe to our private coaching sessions thank you